Students often ask if it is okay to wear prescription glasses or contacts when working in a chemistry lab. Because visual observations are so important, we need to be able to be sure that you can read the lab procedures and make observations. You may have safety goggles or safety glasses in your classroom. Both will protect your eyes. If you wear prescription glasses, goggles are designed to actually fit over those glasses. When working with chemicals, there is always a risk of having a spill. This puts our skin and clothes at risk. By using a safety apron, you can help protect both. Be sure to tie the apron like you do your shoes so it can easily be untied at the end of the lab. If you have trouble tying the apron, have another student help you. But what if you are using an apron from a previous class period and they may have spilled something on the outside? How would you know which side would be facing away from you? One trick is to write on the outside with a permanent marker. If the writing reads correctly to those who are facing you, you know you have placed it on correctly. To prevent accidents, be sure to keep your workspace uncluttered and only have the items out that you need. Be aware of those that are near you and the items around you to keep from knocking things over or bumping into somebody. Another preventative measure is to tie long hair back and to remove jackets and avoid wearing loose sleeves or dangling jewelry. This will prevent your hair from getting into chemicals or a flame, as well as preventing a spill that could harm you or others. When working with a candle, Bunsen burner, or a hot plate, there is always a risk of causing fire or getting burned. Be sure to keep flammable items away from your workspace and always be mindful to never reach over the flame or hot plate. When you are finished with the heat source, extinguish the flame or turn off the hot plate. To prevent cross-contamination between your chemicals, it is a good idea to place a small amount of the reactant in a clean beaker. If you accidentally put too much on the scale, you can remove some and put it back in the beaker. This keeps the original container free of contaminants. Another rule is when using a spoon or scupula to remove a chemical, it is only used for that one chemical. If you're using multiple chemicals, have a separate spoon or scupula for each one. Operating in a safe manner is always the best way to prevent an accident. However, we need to be prepared and ready in the event that an accident happens. If glass is broken, it is important to let the teacher know immediately. It will be their job to clean it up to prevent you from getting cut or coming in contact with chemicals that could be harmful to your skin. A spill can also cause someone to slip and fall. Glass is never to be placed in a trash can as the glass can cut through the trash sack or come in contact with another person who chooses to push it down if the trash can becomes full. A glass container or bucket should be used until the glass can be disposed of in a safe manner. We should also be prepared in case of a more severe accident. Be mindful of where certain safety items are located and the proper use of these items. Trash cans can be used for disposal of paper and some chemicals. Be sure to ask your teacher if it is safe to place questionable items in the trash. Sinks are used for cleaning up lab equipment as well as washing your hands. Some chemicals can be safely disposed of in the sink. Again, be sure to ask your teacher before placing any chemicals or biological items in the sink. Know the location of the safety shower and eye wash station. In the event of a serious spill on your body or a chemical splash into your eyes, Notify the teacher at once in the event of any type of personal injury or injury to another person. As we mentioned earlier, fire can be a danger in a lab. So know where the fire extinguisher, fire blanket, and nearest fire alarm pull switch is located. Also know where your safety exits are located. If the primary exit is blocked, see if a secondary exit is available. Ask your teacher for clear instructions on how you and your classmates should respond in the event of a fire. If your classroom is equipped with gas jets for Bunsen burners, know where the emergency shutoff switch is located to shut off the flow of gas in the event of a fire or gas leak. There may also be cutoffs to electricity and water. Some classrooms may also have a fume hood designed to work with chemical reactions. The fume hood is used to remove harmful or nauseous fumes out of the building and to keep you safe when working with potentially harmful substances. The chemical supply closet and cabinets are off limits to students as many of these substances placed in storage can be harmful and even fatal if used improperly. They are organized in such a way as to provide safe storage such as the utilization of a flammable cabinet and acid cabinet to prevent an unexpected fire or corrosive leak of chemicals. 
It is your teacher's responsibility to maintain these items in a safe manner for the students, staff, and building. Some science classrooms may have class pets or other live organisms used for observation and teaching. Always treat organisms with respect. Never poke, scare, harm, or treat these organisms in an unkind way. This is also true of specimens purchased for dissection. Even though these organisms are no longer alive, they are intended to further your knowledge about the structure and function of internal organs and body structures. When making observations, it is also very important that we never smell directly from the substance. Always utilize a wafting motion. This prevents you from accidentally inhaling too much of the fumes or odors. The final step of any lab is to clean up your work area and wash your hands. Your eye protection and apron should be the last thing that you put away. These are just a few of the rules to be mindful of when working in a science classroom. Probably the most important rules in my classroom are to never horseplay and we never eat or drink in a science lab. You should read the entire lab procedure before you begin and always ask your teacher about anything you do not understand or have a question about. When we all work and operate in a safe manner, we not only prevent injury to ourselves, we prevent from harming others. Ask your teacher for additional safety precautions and rules we need to follow as each school and classroom may have more information than what is contained in this video. Labs are a fun way to learn about the world we live in and working safely is our first priority.